Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. Just really quickly before I jump into the tutorial for today's video, I just wanna give a very heartfelt thank you so much for everybody that's followed along with the Lightroom masking tutorial video that I released a few weeks back. Uh, just the response to that has been completely overwhelming. It's kind of mind blowing. I've almost quadrupled my subscribers. The video has got way more views on its own than the rest of all of my videos combined, which is just insane. Um, so everybody that has viewed it, given a thumbs up, left a friendly comment, which most of them have been, subscribed to the channel, asked questions on it. Just truly a heartfelt thank you. I really do appreciate it. All of that said, that's not why we're here today. What I wanna to talk about today is tied to some of the questions I've gotten on that video, which is around the intersect mask functionality with the new Lightroom masking tools. Little did I know when I created that video that although Lightroom Classic has the intersect mask with option, it is only in Lightroom Classic. It's not in the other versions, Lightroom Desktop, AKA Lightroom Cloud or CC and the mobile apps, it's not there. So that's led to a little bit of confusion uh, with some of the viewers. So I just wanted to walk through that real quickly today because it is still something you can do. Just gonna take you a couple extra clicks. So without further ado, let's just jump on in and I'll show you how to take care of that real quickly if you're not using Lightroom Classic. Okay, so here we are within Lightroom Classic. And first things first, I just wanna run through real quickly again what the Intersect Mask With tool does within Lightroom Classic. So I'm gonna come up to my masking panel I'm going to add a new mask. For the sake of example, I'm going to just do a brush mask here. I've already got show overlay enabled here so you can see real clearly what exactly I'm doing with this. So I'm just going to come out to the image and I'm going to create just a simple brush stroke. So from here, if I wanted to intersect this brush mask I just created with a different mask, I would simply come up to the group mask one, or I could do it on brush one. And I want to intersect this mask with a different mask. So in this case, for the example, I'm just gonna intersect it with another brush. And then I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna brush across. And you'll notice that even though I started the brush stroke off to the left here, it's only applying it where it's overlapping with that brush one mask that I created initially. I can do this multiple times as well. And the only place it's gonna show up is where it's actually intersecting with or overlapping with brush one, and brush two. So pretty easy, pretty straightforward, right? The problem you run into is if I delete out brush two in the other versions of Lightroom, and again, as I said at the start of this, what I didn't know is that there is no intersect mask with option. So how do we recreate a mask intersection when we don't actually have that option within the tool? So it's fairly straightforward, but it does take a couple extra steps. So first things first, you want to subtract another mask. For the sake of the example, I'm going to stick with brush. And I'm going to come out here and now you notice when I subtract this brush two out, it's doing what we would expect. It's subtracting it from brush one, but that's not what I want, right? I want to intersect it with brush one. So all you have to do is simply come up and click the invert box and it creates that intersection. So when it's unchecked, it's subtracting from brush one. But when I invert that brush two, it is now intersecting brush two with brush one. So wherever these two intersect or overlap is now where I've got this mask applied. Now, a little bit of a gotcha here is if I come back up while I'm still on the subtract brush, I can't create any more intersections like I could with that intersect mask with tool. So to do that, you have to be thinking ahead a little bit and knowing where are all the spots I may want to intersect these two masks. So I'm going to delete out brush two again. And now I'm going to still come in and do a subtract from brush one. But this time I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, I know I want them to intersect in these three places. So again, initially here, I am subtracting. So it's deleted out from brush one. But as soon as I hit invert, and again, you can also use the apostrophe key to turn invert on and off. But as soon as I do that, now again, I've got my three intersections with brush one and brush two. So jumping over into Lightroom itself, again, the non-classic version of Lightroom, AKA Lightroom Cloud, AKA Lightroom CC, AKA Lightroom Desktop, <laughs> whatever you wanna call it, same exact principle is gonna apply in here that I just showed you. So I'm gonna come up, hit the mask icon. You can actually see I've already synced in this mask from Lightroom Classic, so I've got syncing turned on. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that out for the sake of example. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in here and just like I did over in Classic, I'm gonna create a brush. I'm gonna just draw this in real quickly. But now if I come up here and I right click, you'll notice there's no option here for 
intersecting the mask with something else. So again, this is where we're going to use what I just showed. We're going to create a subtract from this brush one. For the example, once again, I'm going to use a brush. And now again, whether I want one or multiple intersections, I'm just going to draw in here and you're going to see it subtracting from that brush one. But as soon as I come over and I invert brush two, now we've got our intersection of the masks. Doing this in more of a quote unquote real world type example, let me delete this out and let's just pretend that we are actually going to be working on an edit with this photo. So now what I want to do is create a sky mask and intersect it with a darker luminance range mask, just like I did in the full Lightroom masking tutorial. But again, I was doing that with classic. So I had the intersect mask with option, which I don't have here in Lightroom. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sky mask, let Lightroom do its thing. So now I've got that created. You can see nice clean selection there. And because I want to intersect with, again, using those steps I just ran through with the simple example, I'm going to subtract. I'm going to select luminance range. And I'm going to come out here to the image and I'm just going to select kind of this darker area here with a box selection. Now, once I do that, you can see, again, a luminance range just like a color range is going to be applied to the entire image. But because we're doing as part of this mask group, it's only subtracting right now that darker luminance range from the sky mask I created. So keeping in mind here, I've got my sky mask here. I've got my luminance mask. Here's the luminance mask currently subtracted from that sky mask to create that intersection that I want. So I'm only working in the darker tones of the sky. I want to make sure I'm on the luminance range mask I just selected. And I'm going to invert it. Now, if I come over here and hover on mask one, that group, you can see that the white area is where I'm going to be able to make my impact with my adjustments. And it is now limited to the darker tones within the sky. And of course, I can come over to the luminance mask here and tweak and adapt it as I want. But if I make some adjustments in here, you can start to see that it's only impacting those darker areas of the image itself. Showing another quick example here, let me jump over to this shot I recently captured in Oklahoma. So let's say here that I want to create a radial gradient. So I'm going to start with that. And we're just gonna say, put it over kind of these trees right here a little bit. Let me adjust that feathering a bit. And we'll go a little bit bigger and call it a day. So right now I have this new mask, everything white within the mask I just created is what's gonna be impacted as I make adjustments. So if I draw the exposure down, you can see it's basically creating a darker oval on the image. What I want to do, let's just pretend, is actually brighten this area, but I only want to brighten it where it's intersecting with the oranges in the cypress trees. So that's where I'm going to come in. I'm going to subtract and now I'm going to do a color range. And now this isn't going to be exact for the sake of the example, but I just want to select kind of a, a range of these oranges and yellows. So now that I've done that, you can see it's deleted out, as we would expect, because I did a subtract that lift and exposure from the original radial gradient mask that I created. So again, I've got my original gradient. I've selected my color range, but it was on a subtract. So it subtracted out those yellows and oranges from that original radial that I made. But I want to only impact those yellows and oranges. So just like we did on the Yosemite image, we got to come up here. We have to make sure we're on that color range that I subtracted out and we're going to invert it. And now you can see I've gone way overboard on the adjustment for the sake of the example so you can see it. But now that mask is only being applied where that radial and those color tones are overlapping or intersecting with each other. And if I come over to my panel, I can start dialing this in, make it a little bit, a little bit more reasonable of an edit, maybe bump up the saturation, maybe bump up the clarity, you know, whatever you want to do. But again, it's only going to be impacting where the radial and that color selection are intersecting with each other. So there you go. Like I said, it's not terribly complicated or difficult. It just takes a few more clicks since that intersect mask with option isn't in the other versions of Lightroom. So if you're not using Classic, you can still do it. it just takes a little bit more work. Otherwise, hopefully Adobe will consider adding that in across all the versions so that's consistent and avoid some of the confusion that uh, I was running into and some of the questions that are being left on that masking tutorial. As always, if you found this helpful, please do give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already so that you can Continue to follow along as I release more tutorials and videos going forward. And if you'd like, turn on the bell notifications so you know when I release those new videos. Otherwise, until next time, take care.